Comrades, on behalf of the Communist Party of Great Britain, Marxist Leninist, I extend you my warm welcome for this uh, occasion. It's a very joyful occasion. It's an occasion that marks the victory of the Korean people and their friends in the great uh, 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 you know, Fatherland Liberation War. It was a war waged at a time when following the Second World War, US imperialism was the strongest power in the world and the strongest imperialist power. They thought North Korea, a small country, would be a walkover. And when they opened the door into North Korea, they had some wicked surprises waiting for them. Although the war was a terrible war, it cost four million Korean lives. I have been to Korea a number of times. I've seen the museums. I've seen the places where the Americans simply indulged in massacre after massacre. And yet, the fighting spirit of the Korean people was such. In the end, US imperialism was beaten and forced to sign an armistice whose 61st anniversary we are um, uh, celebrating today. It's a joyous occasion because it tells us when we are organized, when the communist forces unite with each other, when they sing from the same, same hymn sheet as the DPRK people and the uh, leadership of Kamil Kim il -sung worked closely with the Communist Party of China, with the Communist Party of the Soviet Union, there were no forts they could not stop. There were no we are very glad that on this platform today is the representative of the Democratic People's Republic of Korea. We have the diplomatic representative of the People's Republic of, of Cuba, Comrade Kurke Kirk, uh, Luis Garcia. And we got a representative from the Chinese Embassy, Third Secretary of the Embassy, Comrade Han Wen. Comrade, whether you claim it or not, your representatives representing these three countries have made a gigantic contribution to the fight against and the defeat of imperialist schemes. It is, it is in that context you are, you are here, and we're very, very glad to have you. There were no victories they could not win, and the Americans were taught a lesson. It was the first war in the history of the American Republic when the generals of the American military did not come home to claim victory. They had to say they drew a truce. But our movement, as I have said many times, and I'll repeat it even if it makes you unwell to listen to it again, our movement is not destroyed by imperialism. Our movement is not destroyed by the bourgeoisie but by people who act for the bourgeoisie within our own ranks. If it wasn't for the treachery of social democracy during the First World War, if it wasn't for our own people siding the bourgeoisie against our own class, can you just imagine what the consequences following the First World War would have been? Had Soviet Russia been joined by Soviet Germany, Soviet France, Soviet Italy, can you see what the world would have looked like? And again, following the Second World War, although the Soviet Union paid a very heavy price, 27 million Soviet citizens killed, including well over 10 million of the Red Army. Although the Soviet Union paid this heavy price and had huge amounts, colossal amounts of wealth destroyed, the Soviet Union emerged from that war looking taller than ever. If, following the First World War, we had the October Revolution and Soviet Russia. Following the Second World War, we had a whole socialist camp. <laughs> this socialist camp extended to not only Eastern Europe, but it went to the Far East. It went to the DPRK. 
it went to People's Republic of China, it went to Vietnam, and a few years later, they were joined by the Cuban Revolution, um, uh, and, and Cubans have ever th since then been holding the red flag aloft in the whole of the American continent. <laughs> and Cuba is a perfectly good example which shows in the final analysis, victory is not entirely dependent on armament. It is dependent on people. When people have the motivation, when people have the politics, and they rely on the masses of people, they can resist the mightiest of imperialist powers. Can you just imagine living in a shark-infested sea next to American imperialism 90 miles from Miami, and the Cubans stand aloft, and they do not take into consideration what America's attitude would be when they vote in the various, various world bodies. From the United Nations Human Rights Commission to the United Nations General Assembly, the Cubans vote on the correct side. It is a lesson. It is a lesson every socialist and non-aligned country needs to learn. If you turn the other way when your friends and fellow oppressed people are being attacked, don't be surprised if your turn comes. Our strength lies in our unity. Only united can we win. Lenin was not make, indulging in rhetorical flourishes when he said two things which I again would like to repeat. One was that the struggle of the proletariat in the centers of imperialism for its social liberation would be entirely useless if the proletarians in Western Europe and America were not closely united with the hundreds upon hundreds of millions of people who are oppressed by their own ruling class in the colonies and semi-colonies. And secondly, because he realized what damage the opportunists did to the working class movement, he said the struggle for socialism and the fight against imperialism is a humbug and a sham unless this fight is accompanied by fight against opportunism. When we fight against opportunists of our own country, who say the Labour Party is the party of the working class? People tell us we're sectarians. Sometimes, you know, the only way you can defend the interests of the working class is by being sectarian. If we are sectarians, so was Lenin, and I can give you his quotation sometimes, now is not the time. Yes, we are sectarians, but sectar in my view, sectarians are those who desert the stance and the long-term interests of the working class to join the bourgeoisie. They are the sectarians, not we. Yes, we are small. We do not make boasts. We don't go around attending international conferences of hundreds of opportunists and claim to be the movers and shakers of the working class movement in this country. We're not. We're not very much connected with the working class movement. But at least we're making an attempt to connect ourselves with the working class movement. Yeah. Our enemies have, and our opponents have no connections with the working class movement. And what's more, they have cut all possibility of having connections with the working class movement because they passed the working class movement to the sole monopoly of the trade union, labor aristocracy, and their political representative, the Labour Party. We, on the other hand, want to rely on the masses of people. That's precisely ours is the only communist party in this country that is not only growing, but is attracting young people. Look at the crowd here. Obviously, we'd like to match this crowd, the crowd in Kimmelson Square. Yes, we would like to match these crowds to the crowds that used to be in Red Square. Yes, we would like to match the crowds that happen from time to time in Tiananmen Square. We're not in that state. We are a small party, but considering the circumstances we find ourselves in, those of you who follow our policy and our politics would know that our party is on the correct line and it punches above its weight. It punches above its weight because it's got the truth on its side. And you know, in the final analysis, as Stalin was very fond of saying, it, the laws of history are stronger than the laws of artillery. The Americans bomb everywhere. The Israeli fascists are today bombing the people of Gaza and are killing people on the West Bank and everywhere. But I can assure you, I sadly will not be there to sue it. Those of my comrades who are young, who are in their 20s and 30s, would live to see that there will be no Zionist state in this country.
say this. Our opponents, and of course the Zionists, say we are anti-Semites. It is a foul lie. We are not anti-Semites. We are the only people who defend the genuine interests of the Jewish as well as non-Jewish people. Does it make sense to steal other people's land, to bring Jews of all nationalities and nations into, and concentrate them into this ghetto so one day they may, might become the target of the wrath of the people of those countries? Israel is not a Jewish project. It's an imperialist project. It's conceived... imperialism, it's sustained by imperialism, and the day imperialism does not want it to exist, it won't exist. And the only country with the, 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 this, this project still gets a marginal majority of people supporting is the United States of America, but that is changing as well. You look around in Europe, and you find increasing number of people, including sensible Jews, are joining demonstrations against the Israeli onslaught. In, 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 uh, against the people of Gaza. The very people who tell us they're fighting for democracy in Syria, the very people who will tell you they're fighting for democracy in Ukraine, but they're fighting for democracy everywhere except where it needs to be fought for. Gaza has been an open prison, the largest prison and the prison that has been longest in existence. People are, to Israelis say they've left Gaza. They've never left Gaza. They blockaded it from all sides, and they blockaded it from the air. They kill at will, and they are not, there's no soldiering honor in what the Zionists do. There's no soldiering honor with, with what the British, French, and American armies do. Because they're not fighting against their equals. When the Nazis fought in the Second World War, whether we hate Nazis or not, there was some soldiering honor because they were confronting powerful enemies of theirs. Soviet Union most of all, and at some stages Britain, at some stage in the United States of America. And so they had to risk their lives to go. Our gallant pilots are, sh are firing from several miles above the sky against people who have absolutely no defense. And it's shame on them. It's shame on them that there are pilots in these armies who actually bomb women, children, destroy their homes, and come home to have a nice meal with their families and be loving fathers and husbands and whatever the case, the case may be. No person with any sense of shame could ever go, go along with that. Our party says all these things. Our party, as a result, does two things. It earns the wrath and hatred of our enemies, which is how we like. It also, and this is also what we like, it earns the praise and warmth affection, warm affection, of people who are on the correct side of history. And we will not change our line for any amount of bribery, for any reasons of threats, cajolery, we will, we will not do that. We are very glad that on this platform today is the representative of the Democratic People's Republic of Korea. We have the diplomatic representative of the People's Republic of Korea, uh, so sorry, of, of, of Cuba, Comrade Jorge Kirk, uh, Luis Garcia. And we've got a representative from the Chinese Embassy, Third Secretary of the Embassy, Comrade Hang. whether you claim it or not, you representatives representing these three countries have made a gigantic contribution to the fight against and the defeat of imperialist schemes. It is, it is in that context you are, you are here and we're very, very glad to have you. And we also have with us uh, by, uh, to express solidarity, comrades representing the JVP in Sri Lanka, and comrade is there. And <laughs> we also have with us comrade Marcel Cartier. He um, has, he's a man of many talents. If I start mentioning all those, it'll take me a long time. <laughs>
But let me put this say, he's an artist, he's a journalist, he's a politician. And he uh, has done a stint with, with, with Russia today. He's only recently visited um, the DPRK. And he's also visited Ukraine. Um, this is another place where um, America, um, through its fascist puppets, is introducing democracy at the tip of cruise missiles um, and, 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 and doing all kinds of horrible things. When Yanukovych um, tried to repress these fascists in the Maidan, and uh, actually some killings took place, most of them were actually done by the Maidan fascists against the police, etc. Now, there's the daily spectacle of every kind of armament used by the Ukrainian forces on its own people, i.e. in the eastern part, part of Ukraine. They've killed over 400 100 people and there's no end in sight. But the people of Ukraine, in eastern Ukraine at least, are fighting heroically. And we wish them success and we send our solidarity greeting to them from here. <laughs> Once may again, may I thank our honored guests yeah, yeah. for being here and sparing the time, <laughs> and especially the Koreans, the whole of the embassy and their families are represented. Can I wel welcome the families here as well who are sitting at the back? A representative of the People's Daily of China, Comrade Huang Pijao, was here along with his wife. He had to leave and gives his apologies. But we'd like to mention and thank him for coming here. And once the Chinese, of course, announce that something is happening here, 20% of humanity comes to know something is happening here. <laughs> so, lastly, before I sit down, I'd like to thank all of you for coming here. I'd like to thank our cooks who cooked the food, people who helped us with the barbecue. <laughs> Comrades, uh, yeah, uh, who have helped us with the, with the barbecue. Comrade Chima and Joga have cooked Indian food, which some of you like, which some of you don't, but there was other food to be, to be had. <laughs> and they made, made this occasion a mar mar marvelous occasion. 